In this video, we're continuing the optimization as well. And the sum of the perimeters of an equilateral triangle and a square is 10. Find the dimensions of the triangle and the square that produce a minimum total area. Well, first I'm going to draw a picture to kind of guide me. So an equilateral triangle, I'm going to call these sides, oh, I'm going to call them T. And so I know they're all the same. Now the square, I'm going to call S all the way around. And now notice that I do not assume that they are the same. That is a dangerous assumption. Don't make that assumption. All right, so now if I go to my steps, step one, make a list of all variables. Okay, so I'm going to let T be the, uh, the value of the sides of the equilateral triangle. Now S is going to be the value of the sides, sides of the square. Okay, so now P, I'm going to let be my perimeter, my total perimeter, perimeter, total. And I'm going to let A be my total area, total area. Okay, so now if I want to go back, step two, determine the equation or equations that need to be optimized according to those variables. Okay, well, I need my total area. Now my total area is given by A is going to equal the area of the uh, equilateral triangle is now going to be one half the base, which is the T times the height. Well, we don't really know the height, but we do know that angle. That angle is 60 degrees or it's pi over three. Okay, and so we do know that the height would be, uh, if we look at the height and it's the opposite, then this would be under sine. And so uh, I'm going to write this next to it here. I say that the sine of, we'll call this theta, the sine of theta is equal to the opposite, which is H over the hypotenuse, which is T, which makes H equal to T sine theta. Okay, now, Theta does not change, it is a constant, and so that's what allows us to rewrite this. And so this is going to be T sine of 60 degrees. Now that's the area of the triangle. The area of the square, we've got to add that on, is going to be S times S, which is S squared. So just to kind of rewrite this here, I'm going to get A is equal to 1 half T squared sine of 60, which I can actually go ahead and do. This is square root of 3 over 2. And so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and write that out and combine that with the half since that does not change. And so I'm going to say this is the square root of 3 over 4t squared plus s squared. That's it. So now I've got that. Well, I've got S's and T's, I can't really have that. And so I'm gonna to have to come up with some kind of an auxiliary equation, okay, or some kind of a supporting equation. That's step three. Okay, well, we know that the total perimeter is 10, but the total perimeter then is actually 3T plus 4S. Add up all the sides, that's 3T, that's 4S. So if I solve for, say, S, then I get this equals, or implies that if I solve for S, I get 10 minus 3T divided by 4 is equal to S. Now let me let me do that out just to make sure that we're, we're understanding it. Most of you should get it, but I know that there are some that are just like, wow, what, what did you do there? Okay, I'm going to solve for S. 
And so to do that, I subtract 3t from both sides. Working as far away from s as possible, I have 10 minus 3t. Those go away, equals 4s. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and both sides. Uh, so the 4s go away on the right, and then I'm left with 10 minus 3t over 4 on the left. That equals s. So now that I have that, I can take that value and I can plug it back in here. So now I have a is equal to uh, square root of 3 over 4, t squared, plus, and now this is going to be 10 minus 3t over 4, all that squared. All right, well, now I'm going to, well, no, that's not going to be so bad. So I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of that now. I'm not, I'm not going to expand it out. It's one way you could do it is to expand it out, but I'm not going to. So now I go ahead and I take dA dt. And so the derivative of this thing over here is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 as I bring the 2 down times t. So 2 times 4, or 2 divided by 4 reduces to 1 half plus. And now I take the derivative of the outside, which is going to be 2 times the stuff inside. And I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside is going to be negative 3 quarters. This is a constant. This is what you're taking the derivative of. And so yeah, it's really negative 3 quarters times t, which the derivative of that with respect to t is just negative 3 quarters times 1, which is negative 3 quarters. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and set this equal to 0. So 0 is equal to square root of 3 over 2t plus. And now uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, combine this or distribute this to. And so I'm just going to do this in two separate steps because I don't want to lose myself in the algebra. So this is going to be 20 minus 6t all over 4. And i got to multiply that by negative 3 over 4. Okay, this is going to be 0 is equal to uh, square root of 3 over 2t uh, plus, and now we have a negative 3 quarter times 20. That's going to be a negative 15. And then I have, uh, this is going to, whoop, you know what, I don't want to do it that way. Just multiply through by that negative 3 on top. And so that's going to reverse, that's going to reverse this. So I'm going to have 18 t minus 60 all over 16. There, I like that better. You'll see why in a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. I have, uh, if I kind of expand this out here, I have um, 0 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 t plus, and now I have 18 t minus 60 all over 16. Multiply both sides by 16 to clear the fractions. That's the least common denominator. I don't need two pluses in there. Okay, and so I'm going to multiply both sides by 16. Be careful when you're doing this. You have to distribute to both things. And so I get 0 is equal to, and this is going to be 8 root 3. And t, oh, plus, that's what that was. My t was looking like a plus sign up there. Uh, and then this just simply goes to 18t minus 60. Okay, so now, if I solve for t, I can get the 60 on the other side, so that 60 is equal to 8 roots 3t plus 18t. I can factor out a t, and so I'm going to bring out my t, and that's going to give me 60 is equal to 8 root 3 plus 18 times t, and now I can divide both sides by that. And so I have, if I divide both sides by 8 root 3 plus 18, I have 60 over 8 root 3 plus 18 is equal to t. And so that's my value for t. Now, I can, I, I can draw out a 2 from both top and bottom. And so if I simplify this a little bit, I have 30 over 4 root 3 plus 9. 
And that's really all I can do there. You could, I suppose, if you really wanted to, you could rationalize the bottom, but I don't see any advantage to it. And so I'm not going to do it. And so now S, however, is equal to 10 minus 3T over 4. And so if that's true, then S is equal to 10 minus 3 times 30 over 4 root 3 plus 9. 30 over 4 root 3 plus 9 all over 4. Okay, so if we do this, then S is equal to 10 minus 90 over 4 root 3 plus 9 all over 4. And this is going to be S is equal to 5 halves minus 90 over 16 root 3 plus 36. And what we can do is we can go ahead and reduce that. And I noticed that just right at the end. So we can reduce the second one here. So this is going to be 5 halves minus, and we can pull a 2 out from everything. So that I get 45 over 8 root 3 plus 18. And there we go. Okay, so what you want to do uh, on your calculator, though, is you're going to want to check these to make sure that you get a good um, uh a good decimal. You can't have negative numbers, and so we have to make sure that this is in fact going to be less than five halves so that we get a good negative number. Okay, those are the dimensions.